It's a beautiful bacon day, Cookie Crusaders. Today I wanted to talk to you about player versus player in the arena mode and how to get to Master 5. Now, as you can see, I do have Master 3 currently, but I want to talk about the principles of good team building and understanding how you can make some good team compositions to help you ascend. Now, as you can see just in this list, when we're looking at all of the players, our current attack power is 695,000 with this specific team, where most of their attack power is all within the same realm, some a little bit higher. But I'm going to show you how sometimes attack power does not always matter. Sometimes it is the team composition. So for instance, this team, this team should be beatable because they have four levels lower of a scroll and two levels lower of a feather. It does look like they have a double tank team and some healers, but we should still be able to push through. So let's test it out. The reason we have this team is my main team currently. Damage resistance from Strawberry Grape, damage focus from Hollyberry, skill freezing from Frost Queen, Eclair for weakness and shields, and Pure Vanilla for healing and shields as well. And then the Feather usually hits on Eclair or Frost Queen, as they will usually be the ones to first perish. And then the damage can be reapplied on the opponent team. So as you can see, we took them down. We didn't really have much trouble on that one. But if we go look at other teams. So this one, this one beat us mostly because of higher treasure, mostly. But the main reason is because this one, this little hidden eye that's next to Hollyberry, that is very likely to be Strawberry Crepe. And right now the current meta is the double tank team with fast cooldown on Pure Vanilla and Strawberry Crepe to be able to maximize the amount of uh, ability cooldown happening against the player versus player battles. So that is why that's an instance where that team, even though they have more power, they beat me. Um, a good example of a lower power team that beat is, where was it? This one down here. This one used the summoner comp. And so that summoner comp was able to defeat my team because of their total play style out weighed against my defensive team. Now, since then, my defensive team has changed. I'm actually using a bait team now. And the reason I'm doing this is because this is one play style you can do where you can construct a team that's still good, but more or less baits the overall potential of your teams. And it's something you can hit revenge wise later. So the reason I set this team up was that I don't really have any healers or any major defenders making sure that everyone stays alive, but rather the amount of damage output from Sorbet, Frost Queen, Sea Fairy, and Eclair is going to be high. And then hopefully the Insignia is going to go ahead and take care of T Knight, since his toppings are set up with Solid Almond to try and keep him as alive as possible so that he can strike back against the team before they totally win. And as you can see in the defense where I've had it, this one, they tried to use a cheese team or a gim team, didn't work. T Knight took them out. So that, that just wasn't able to work because of that. Same thing, cheese team. Um, so this defensive team I have is doing good against cheese teams. I didn't have it built two days ago. That's why I didn't beat this one. So, but as you can see the most recent ones, it's working against. So my defensive team is taking care of the cheese comp side of the meta where my attackers are taking care of the other side of the meta. So my recommendation is if you're going to do a bait team, I wouldn't say put your completely weakest team because you're gonna lose a lot of medals and then you're gonna to have to fight back with most of your arena tickets in the revenge battles. And if that's your style, fine, that can work, but it's gonna to be tough because you're either gonna to wanna to to have a lot of tickets or you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have a strong enough team to fight back against the teams that beat you. 
So my personal recommendation is to have two good separate meta teams uh, that counter different types of teams so they're not too similar. And that will be a pretty strong setup. Now, another team I could build, and I actually will, so that you can see the different potentials and the different mindsets. This is gonna be a healing team. So very focused on healing, very focused on damage resistance and the ability to just continue in the game. So as you can see, I've got Pyrvino, Parfait, Cotton. Those are the three guaranteed healers. Pumpkin Pie for a sixth body because more bodies on the field can be strong too. And a Clair for shields. So I have no defenders here. Nothing protecting the front lines. So theoretically, I can be quickly taken down. And in certain scenarios, I would be. But when we equip the scroll, we equip the... Not the feather, sorry. This is actually going to be two commons. We equip the horn and we equip the clock. We'll have extra defensive power because of the horn, faster abilities because of the clock, an extra attack and healing attack power from the scroll. So as you can see, if we go here and we fight, let's say... I usually don't fight people with higher level treasures than me because I don't normally win unless I'm using a cheese team. So if I do this one, this one should be doable. Maybe not, depending on how they have the setup. Well, let's find out. And you can watch in real time. I'll slow it down so you can see the healing output from my side of the team. They're actually using a parfait too, so that's kind of funny. But their damage output's pretty high with Sea Fairy. But as you can see, my team's just pumping back to 100% health. And then casting the weakness from Eclair. Parfait might take the dive right here, but boom. Pierre Vanilla and Cotton just bring everything right back. Back to full health. So I'm going to speed it up. And everyone got really hit hard right there from Eclair and Sea Fairy, but... Pure Vanilla and Cotton and the Pom Pom are still alive, ends up winning. Because that extra body, that extra body on the field, Cotton and uh, Pumpkin Pie that they put out, it does it. And I'll show you the statistics here. So Pumpkin Pie, 2.6 million damage. Huge damage. Because Pumpkin Pie has a high base damage as it is. Actually outbeat a Claire. A Claire on my side, I need more attack and critical substat to outmatch their Claire, as you can see. But, and they only have a four star, they still did more damage. So that's just a better topping setup. My Parfait barely did much damage, actually even less than theirs. But healing, massive healing from my side. Almost six million in total between the three versus their 2.4. So almost three times the healing that their team was able to output. And that's what really made the difference. Cause even though their Eclair and Sea Fairy did some really great damage, Heck, even their Cotton and Hollyberry, we were able to out-heal the problem. And we had Pom Pom at the end. And actually, if you see damage received, Parfait took the biggest beating of our team because there's just no defense there. So, I will show you a couple friendly battles too to kind of show you some different comps that you might come against. So, let's go look at this one. So Coco Curry, really good against stuns. Um, Cotton Pure Vanilla, really good against healing. So in this instance, this team should be able to push through damage-wise because of the lower scroll, but this team can also out-heal. So let's test them both. That scroll level really does make a difference, but I do want to show you both instances of what happens. So this team is just focused on resistance of damage and counterattacking with the Frost Queen and the Claire. So it's kind of brunting damage and then pushing it back. And it handles it without much any problem. And all that's left is their Coco Curry because Coco has a very high HP and defense base stat. And then if we look at the analytics, a Claire was just the major player there. Um, outdid their entire team. Pure Vanilla was the only one healing, and that was that. Now if we go to the same friendly battle, and we test our healing compromise, 
We'll see what the difference is. As you can see, they're putting good damage, but yet again, that healing is just going off so fast. Parfait's adding buffs to our team. Eclair's adding debuffs to their team. Khan's adding more bodies to the field. Pumpkin Pie's adding more bodies to the field. This one's a more tight race, and we do lose Parfait and Pumpkin. But in the end, we still keep it strong enough to take the win. So that's, that's a tighter win. But that's because they had very good damage output from Sea Fairy and resistance of stun, which Cotton gives from Coco. And the Clayer puts the weakness on, so that means that we take additional damage, even though we are able to heal against it. And as you can see again, big healing, but their damage was pretty good overall. So I hope this helps you guys. Um, if you have other comps you would like to discuss, um, other teams, I'm working on whole different setups and build-ups, uh, trying to find every possible comp that can be done. But I'd love to hear anything you guys have. Obviously, we have the double tank team. We have the speed comp team. We have the cheese team. We have a healing comp team. Uh, I'm sure there's more, but, you know, I'd love to hear your comments and feedback and anything that you guys think would be interesting to see or any theme teams that you want to see in the future. Thank you for stopping by. Have a wonderful day.